Good afternoon, everyone. We'll uh, start the uh, the main part of the program uh, at uh, at one forty-five in a, just in a minute or two. But there's just one announcement to make uh, that I will make. Um, I'm David Hill, the uh, chair of the Marius College's membership committee. And one of the uh, really important groups that we have within the college is our unit representatives. And there are uh, designated representatives for every school department and faculty uh, in the, at the university. And we unfortunately at this point in time have a number of vacant unit representative positions. So if you see your department up there or you know somebody from that department, uh, and you might consider uh, volunteering as a unit representative, please let me know or let the col college office know uh, as soon as possible. We wanna get these positions filled sometime in the next uh, few weeks. Uh, there's about 14 or 15 of them listed there and uh, any assistance you can give uh, to us in recruiting uh, unit representatives would be, uh, would be greatly appreciated. Uh, I will be uh, hanging around for a few minutes after the meeting if anybody wants to ask me more about what our unit representative does and uh, how they assist the college in its activities. Uh, please see me uh, after the meeting. So I'd like to turn it over now to uh, our principal, Paul Harrison, uh, who will introduce today's speaker. Thank you, David. I'll first uh, acknowledge that UBC's campuses are situated on the traditional ancestral and unceded territories of the Musqueam, Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, and the Silix Okanagan nations. Uh, UBC is a community of learners, and we have much to learn from the indigenous stewards of these lands. Welcome everyone uh, to this special general meeting of the UBC Emeritus Sorry, College. No. Uh, if it's not too late or too early, happy new year. Uh, depending on what you celebrate. Um, uh, we're lucky that we didn't hold this a week ago in terms of the weather, but uh, parking is a nightmare on campus with the Thunderbird Parkade closed. So I hope you didn't have to go too far to park or maybe took transit but I, like I did. As you know, today's special speaker is UBC's 17th president and vice chancellor, Benoit Anton Bacot. Uh, 17th. Uh, you may realize, uh, Benoit, that in this group, there are many people who have seen a lot of UBC presidents. You, you're my 14th. <laughs> <laughs> but we are very pleased that you're addressing the Emeritus College and so early in your tenure here at UBC. Before joining UBC, Dr. McCall served in several academic leadership roles, uh, President and Vice Chancellor of Carleton University, Provost and Vice Principal Academic at Queen's, Provost and Vice President Academic Affairs at Concordia in his hometown of Montreal, where he was recognized with an award for sustainability champion. And since 2020, he has also been serving on the Board of Directors of Universities Canada. Now, Dr. Bacow earned his PhD in neuropsychology from the University of Montreal, after which he undertook a postdoctoral fellowship at the University of Glasgow. His research is in the field of cognitive neuroscience and focuses on the links between brain activity and perception in the visual, auditory, and vestibular systems, as well as on multisensory integration. Sharing his own lived experience, Benoit advocates nationally for open conversations about mental health and substance abuse. These efforts have been recognized with the Transformational Leader Inspiration Award from the Royal Ottawa Hospital and the honorary presidency of the Canadian Psychological Association. Benoit, the mic is yours. We're very eager to hear what you have to say. Thank you so much, Paul. Thank you so much, Paul. I, I believe I'm mic'd, yes. Yes, I hope you can hear me. It's, uh, it's great to be here. Thank you for the invitation, uh, Paul, and, uh, and everyone involved. Uh, it's, uh, it's not... Uh, it's not without a, a little bit of stress that I present myself in front of such a distinguished and experienced room who's seen up to 14 of my predecessors <laughs> and who can uh, make very careful comparisons 
and perhaps rank uh, all the presidents. Uh, I, thank you for making it to campus today. We've had interesting uh, days uh, the past uh, few weeks. There was a snowstorm, my first uh, Vancouver snowstorm. That's what I was trying to avoid by moving out here from uh, Montreal and Ottawa. That didn't work. Uh, we, clo we closed the school for one day because about 10 inches fell. It was a lot, right? Uh, and then it stopped snowing, but the snow remained on the ground. So I looked at the team and said, what do we do? I said, well, we keep the school closed. <laughs> okay, we close the school a second day. And then I asked, well, what's the strategy to reopen the school? And they say, you wait until it rains. <laughs> and then it rains. So you learn something every day uh, in beautiful, uh, beautiful British Columbia. And I thought this week we'll all be back to normal, uh, perfect, uh, Paul, you evoked uh, the parkade issue, indeed, and then the transit strike. So hopefully from today, we're all good and, uh, and ready to go. It, it, really, it really has been fantastic uh, to join the UBC. I started the 1st of November. So it's really early days uh, uh, for me. And it's also my first time uh, living in Vancouver, living in BC. Uh, I believe the expression is West Coast, best coast. And I always get a, a hand for that. Thank you. And then I always joke, except maybe for hockey, because the Montreal Canadiens uh, remain. Uh, and I always get booze for that one. I always get booze for that one. Uh, so Paul, Paul asked me to say a few words. And I was wondering, what should I speak about? What could I speak about? And, and given that it's still early days for me, certainly compared to many of you in this room, I thought I would just share first impressions uh, of UBC, uh, how I perceived it from the outside, uh, how I see it today, uh, what we can do together uh, in the future, uh, and get your advice, uh, and of course, uh, how you as a group and individually can contribute to our future success. And uh, I've even prepared a little, a little slide deck uh, that is brand new. Uh, this is a world premiere of, uh, of this slide deck, and I, I made it myself. I don't claim that it's professional in any way, shape, or form. Uh, and uh, can I can I move it forward? Here we go. I called it discovering UBC because that's really what I'm doing. Uh, it, it's funny when you're new, when you land into a new place. Everybody is new. The structures are new. The processes uh, are new. The problems uh, are new, and uh, and sometimes quite challenging. And uh, you try to make up your mind about uh, what the challenges and the opportunities are, and where we need to go. Uh, to go next. So let me first acknowledge, of course, that our beautiful Vancouver campus here is located on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Musqueam uh, people. And of course, our Okanagan uh, campus is on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Silks Okanagan uh, nation. And of course, we're very grateful uh, that UBC uh, can be situated on these beautiful, uh, beautiful territories and indeed throughout the province. You know the history. Uh, it was interesting uh, for me uh, to learn that this land, the whole peninsula was granted by the province about a hundred years ago. What a gift, what a gift uh, and what foresight the government of the day had uh, to allow for the establishment of a university on uh, this land. Uh, 1915, uh, UBC uh, formally uh, established. So that's, that's, re that's really, uh, just above, uh, just a, a little bit more than a hundred years uh, ago, uh, and uh, and here on the Point Grey campus, uh, 1925. So we're coming on a hundred years at uh, Point Grey. Then Robson Square, then Okanagan. But it, it's interesting for me to see uh, how big and powerful uh, UBC has become in what is relatively a short period of time. We're we're one of the largest and more re most research intensive universities in the country, and the one I know well in my hometown of Montreal is McGill, who's almost twice the age of UBC. And if you look at where we are today, we're larger and we're more research intensive. So there's, there's something really incredible about the progression, this, the rate of progression of UBC. And in my view, there's no reason why that wouldn't continue uh, well into the 21st century uh, and beyond. Three campuses. Uh, or, or two campuses and a number of sites uh, in uh, the city. I, I do love the Okanagan campus. I don't know if, uh, if some of you have spent a lot of time on the Okanagan campus. It really is a beautiful uh, place and uh, an, an additional asset 
uh, for UBC for a different type of student, a different kind of student experience. And they've also uh, developed a really impressive uh, research enterprise uh, over the past uh, number of years. And I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't point out all the other sites uh, were really present as a university throughout BC. It's the University of British Columbia, and it really is. It's not just Vancouver. Uh, it's downtown Vancouver, uh, but it's also, especially through the medical school, all over, uh, all over the province. Some numbers, and maybe you'll be surprised at, uh, at some of them uh, if you haven't been tracking them uh, year to year. Did, did you know that there's over 70,000 students at UBC today? 70,000 uh, students. Almost uh, 20,000 people receive a paycheck from UBC, 400,000 alum of UBC. Research funding creeping towards 800 million uh, a year with over 200 uh, research chairs in total, eight Nobel, and uh, I was happy to learn 65 Olympic uh, medals. Coming from the outside, these, num these numbers are just truly impressive uh, in size and scope. Rankings, do you believe in rankings? Uh, for me, uh, when we go up in rankings, they're extremely meaningful indicators of success. When, uh, when you happen to go down in rankings, they're quite biased and uh, best, best ignored. Uh, but uh, that gives you a sense uh, around, uh, around top 40 in the entire uh, world and the competition has become much more intense uh, with the development of Eastern universities over the past 20 years or so. Top 40 in the world, and that includes many private institutions, especially American uh, private institutions. So it's really a top 20 public institution uh, in the world. This is world class, uh, including in sustainability. And uh, we can be very, very proud uh, of what we've done. I'll say a little bit more uh, about uh, that later uh, in, uh, in, the, uh, in the presentation. This is a graph of a research funding uh, over time. This is about a 30-year timeline, and uh, you see in 1990 uh, about 100 uh, million in uh, research funding at UBC, and, and research funding is by no means the only way uh, to measure research productivity and impact, but it's a good proxy. Uh, that means people are willing to invest in what you do because they believe in the power and impact of your ideas. So $100 million of research funding 30 years ago, and then look at that. Uh, with the Trek land uh, endowment coming on through a very, very prosperous uh, period, the Chrétien uh, years uh, for Canadian science, uh, the opening of Okanagan, and then uh, a little bit slower perhaps uh, because the Canadian funding context has been more difficult in the past 10 years, all the way to almost uh, $800 million of, uh, of research on this campus, which allows us to do incredible things. And uh, I've committed to, uh, to visiting a number of labs uh, I tried to visit one or two labs uh, a week, and it's been incredible uh, to see. And I can't name them all, but the level of research excellence uh, here at UBC buggles uh, the mind. Uh, I selected some. If your area is not in the list, that's okay. All areas are great. Uh, but I, I, thought, I thought I had to start. Uh, with biomedical uh, innovation, very much including uh, biomedical engineering, uh, the development of vaccines, uh, everything that is being done uh, to bring new technologies to bear on our capacity to live longer, healthier. Uh, everything that we do around healthy aging, uh, very, very powerful. I visited the Quantum Matter Institute and had to pretend that I understood what was going on there. I don't know if you've had that experience as, uh, uh, as uh, physicists and engineers uh, explained uh, uh, how the various uh, subatomic particles behaved and, and how that, uh, that created very new, uh, very new properties that allowed for things like quantum materials and quantum computing. I went, yes, yes. You're, you really get a sense that the future uh, is being built right here at UBC. Same thing. Uh, with AI that is a little bit more uh, known, but now spreading across all disciplines and across all businesses uh, on, on the basis of work uh, done uh, in our laboratories. Uh, the other day I was in forestry bioproducts, uh, 
the the goal of that place is to replace all uh, of the petroleum products, fuel, plastics, with organic products, stuff made out of trees. And it really is incredible uh, how they take uh, organic fibers, hemp, tree, fungus, and make fuel, make plastics, uh, made food, made, make food wrapping and cosmetics, uh, all from renewable sources that are biodegradable and that protect our planet. Uh, that really is uh, the future. Uh, critical mineral, uh, that's a new form of mining, uh, looking for materials such as germanium that are needed in new technologies. Uh, we do this right here at UBC. And I, I liked, uh, I added at the end their emergency and their resilience of recovery. Uh, I visited a great lab in the Okanagan on wildfires, uh, how to understand them, uh, prevent uh, them, better manage uh, them to keep our community uh, safe. So that's a very, very brief uh, overview of uh, what I perceive to be research excellence across such a breadth uh, of topics uh, at UBC. And I was also happy to learn that our ideas are put to work in terms of innovation uh, that is translated into companies, translated into ventures. Uh, I've counted uh, 249 spin-off uh, companies on 622 licensing uh, agreements. Uh, if you look at uh, uh, entrepreneurship at UBC, which is the groups that, uh, that oversees all this work, uh, these, uh, these ventures have uh, created almost 2,000 uh, jobs, raised almost uh, $2 billion in capital, and generated revenues of about $800 uh, million uh, over, uh, over a period of time. So we're, and this is the pitch that we need to make to the government of BC. We teach students, obviously, we discover great ideas, but we also contribute to the prosperity of the province at a very, very high uh, degree. So far, so good? No complaints so far. A highlight of the fall was a fall convocation. And I'm sure you've all seen convocation. Uh, we do it 10 times in the fall. I think it's 32 times in the spring. Uh, something like that, right? Uh, every year, UBC graduates over 15,000 students with a UBC degree on their way to a successful and self-determined life. Think about that. 15,000 people, 15,000 happy and proud family, 15,000 people that then go on, earn a living, contribute to society, uh, contribute to, uh, uh, to anything that you can think about. Uh, the health, the law, health, law, the arts, business, um, it's costly to be a student today. I think about that a lot. Uh, the word is affordability crisis. There's a housing crisis. I was happy to learn uh, that we have the largest student residence park in the country at 15,000 beds. We wanna grow that. Uh, that will get us close to 20,000 beds uh, by 2050. And uh, of course, we want to help students pay uh, for their studies uh, as well. And, and UBC, year in, year out, UBC students receive almost $400 million of subsidy scholarships, bursaries to help them uh, complete, uh, complete their studies. And that's a number that will have to, uh, to increase. Quickly on some of the files that, uh, that the teams have been advancing uh, over time. The commitment to reconciliation is very profound uh, here at UBC. Uh, I would consider UBC one of the leaders uh, in Canada and around the world in terms of uh, the implementation of Indigenous people's human rights. The Indigenous uh, Strategic Plan uh, is one of the leading documents uh, in this regard uh, in Canada. Implementation is going well. There's also a very special relationship with our host nation, the Musqueam. Uh, we're currently in the process of renewing uh, our agreement uh, with Musqueam. One of my favorite places uh, on campus is the Longhouse. I don't know if you've had the opportunity to see uh, and enjoy the Longhouse, a very special uh, building, great support uh, for our indigenous uh, students. Uh, and uh, on the Okanagan campus, uh, the, uh, the alliance uh, with uh, the Silks people is very strong. And uh, in particular, it's expanded now into the offering of language courses. 
leaders in sustainability and climate action. Uh, I'm sure many people in this room have taken part in some uh, of those uh, initiatives. UBC was one of the first universities to move in terms of a sustainability policy over 25 years ago to create the sustainability office. Right? People didn't talk about sustainability if you go back uh, to 1990. There really is a new concept that was embraced early uh, by UBC in terms of campus activity, reducing our carbon gas emissions, uh, in terms of our curriculum, uh, with literally uh, over a thousand courses uh, speaking about sustainability at UBC, and perhaps most importantly, 40 research groups trying to find ways to make UBC, BC, Canada, and our world more sustainable. This is important for me uh, personally, uh, health, uh, health and wellness. Uh, the modern world's stressful. Being a student is hard for a number of reasons. I, I think being young today is harder than it used to be. Looking around the room for disagreement. Uh, I, 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 I feel that my, my early years uh, were less fraught uh, than what uh, students are, are, are facing uh, today for a number of reasons, uh, some economic, some social, some technological, uh, some the availability of, of temptations uh, like social media that didn't exist uh, back in the day. So I, so I worry uh, about the health and wellness of our students. Uh, the, the results of the survey are very, very clear that our students are more depressed, more anxious, more likely to use substances, more likely to be isolated uh, than past a generation, and everything indicates that the generation coming up uh, is, following, uh, is following that trend. So it's particularly important that we have a comprehensive strategy to support our students and to help them help themselves towards being more resilient. And uh, in my view, student success and mental health are one of the same. If, if you're well and you're healthy and you have a, a, a balanced uh, daily life, uh, the chances that you'll be successful is much, much, much uh, higher. So I'm very committed to that. Uh, I have my own history of, uh, of depression and, uh, and substance use. Uh, by the grace of God, uh, I, came, I, came through, I came through. And my, my, my view, my strong view, is that with the right help at the right time, everybody can come through uh, and, be, uh, and be successful. So we have a great strategy, uh, in, an incredible array of mental health support uh, on this campus and in residence. And I'm very, very pleased uh, that we will soon be opening, opening the Health Gateway Building, which is a one-stop shop for all uh, health and mental health services uh, on this campus. It's going to open in 2024, uh, and it will also include uh, academic programs and research uh, on health and wellness. So very, very pleased uh, to, see, uh, to see that. We're building a lot at UBC. There's always cranes up in the air, eh? Always, you, you look around, you see all the cranes. Uh, when you look at the old pictures uh, and, and today, uh, the development of the campus has just been absolutely phenomenal. The residential part for sure, but also the academic buildings. And there's currently uh, four more uh, on the go in addition to the, to the, to the, um, uh, to the Health Gateway building. Uh, the business school needs to expand. Any, anybody from uh, Solder? Welcome Solder people. Uh, great school, maybe the best business school in the country. Uh, there's not enough uh, uh, space uh, in the current building. There's a great uh, expansion uh, project that, that will, I think, close to double uh, the, uh, the uh, footprint uh, of the school. School of Biomedical Engineering, I was saying how much uh, our medical uh, practitioners and our engineers have come together to, to use new technologies uh, to make us more healthy, to make us live longer, a brand new facility will open uh, with cutting edge re research and instruction, uh, also set to open uh, this year, 2024. New residences, uh, always we're aiming to go to 20,000 beds. Uh, that's the Brock Common phase two. And uh, the recreation uh, space, uh, we, we don't have enough uh, recreation facilities. So in the North Campus, uh, the uh, recreation uh, facilities will open, uh, I think in 2026. Uh, is, uh, is set to, uh, uh, to open. Applied science is a big project on the go. The med school is preparing another big project. So the next uh, five to 10 years, we'll see uh, further growth of our, economic, of our academic uh, footprint and, uh, uh, and, uh, and footprint on campus. Forward the campaign for UBC. 
Uh, all of this takes money. Uh, that's part of my role to help uh, to help uh, generate uh, funds uh, for for student support, for research, uh, for buildings. Forward, the campaign for UBC is aiming to raise three billion dollars, uh, which is one of the biggest campaigns ever attempted at a university in Canada. We're already past the halfway mark with about 1.7. A billion dollars raised, and we're in the midst now of the biggest uh, fundraising year in UBC uh, UBC's history. About three hundred million dollars uh, have been have been raised uh, already. Um, very proud of the campaign. Uh, the themes, uh, as you may know, uh, healthy planet, healthy lives, healthy society. So, as individuals, as societies, as a planet, uh, how can we be healthy? How can we work together to build the world? Uh, of tomorrow. Ha! Yeah, that's right. I, I put that in. And, and, and please, if you know some lesser known facts about uh, uh, UBC, do, do let me know. Somebody told me uh, the other day that Nikki Haley's dad was either a UBC professor or, 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 or a graduate of UBC, one of the two, but that's unconfirmed. I haven't been able to, <laughs> haven't been able to ascertain that fact fully. These, these I've confirmed uh, were one of the most popular filming uh, locations uh, in uh, the world, uh, really. And I've seen some sets uh, of people uh, filming and uh, why wouldn't they come film here? It's so, so beautiful. Uh, you've seen the blue whale in the BD Museum, largest in Canada. Uh, is that true? Apple trees that were descendant of those that inspired <laughs> Newton to compose the theory of gravity in the 1661. So, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rest under one of them and wait for an apple to fall on my head and maybe I'll have great ideas. Uh, and then the, 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 la the last one I thought was the funniest uh, in, in Superman, if you, if you, if you like uh, the Superman franchise, the Kryptonian language was developed right here uh, at UBC uh, by a professor of, uh, of anthropology. So we can, uh, I'm happy to exchange about uh, more UBC uh, trivia uh, as, uh, as we get to chat a little bit uh, uh, after my presentation, which I'm about to bring to, uh, to a close. Uh, I thought you might be wondering, okay, uh, you're, you're new, you're coming to UBC. Uh, these are your first impressions. Uh, what must we do now? What are your priorities uh, for uh, this year? So I don't think any of them will surprise you. Uh, first and foremost is to meet the community. Uh, make sure that I understand the history, the people, uh, the aspirations uh, of this community and to connect. So I'm very thankful that you're inviting me today and you're giving me a chance uh, to advance uh, this objective. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, two is the leadership team. Uh, you arrive uh, and uh, you, you inherit a team, you inherit VPs, you inherit uh, deans, you inherit uh, associate vice presidents. Uh, you, must, uh, you, you must spend time with them, give them uh, trust, uh, confidence, direction, uh, ascertain whether the team is set up in the right way. And, uh, and so far, I've been very pleasantly surprised by our leadership team. Three, obviously, uh, our academic and research mission. Uh, how can we further grow uh, our productivity, our impact, our reputation in terms of teaching, in terms of learning, in terms of research? Five to eight, uh, four, to, four to eight are a little bit more uh, specific and I'll go very, very quickly. We, uh, we have a board and a Senate. Uh, I chair a Senate, some of you are on this body. Uh, is our governance where it should be? Is, is our governance uh, optimally uh, organized? Is it, is it serving the needs of UBC to the degree uh, that it should? I'm conducting this evaluation uh, now, I'm very impressed uh, with Senate uh, so far, I, I have to say, uh, as well as uh, the board. Evaluate progress on the Indigenous Strategic Plan. We have a great strategy, but are we making progress? We are, but I'm not sure that we are at the rate uh, that we should be. Same thing around uh, uh, EDI and anti-racism. We have a great strategy, the STEER framework. Uh, I'd like to see a progress report that allows us to identify gaps and where we need to go uh, next. Seven, I think is particularly important. I think uh, partnership is at the core of our success and in particular partnership with, uh, with government, with Victoria and with Ottawa. I lived in Ottawa the past six years. I know them well. 
I, uh, I will continue to bug them uh, for uh, support of UBC uh, initiatives. And uh, we'll get to know uh, Victoria. I've already met uh, the premier three times. He's very tall. <laughs> when you stand next to the premier, you go, <laughs> what is happening here? Uh, but he's a lovely and, uh, and, and smart, uh, smart man and uh, uh, understands the power uh, of higher education. And uh, we're grateful for, for their support. Eighth is around campus planning, a new building. You saw some of our projects. What comes next? What comes next uh, in terms of prioritizing uh, all the academic and residential uh, projects uh, that we want to build on the beautiful uh, UBC campus? And finally, nine, nine, how do we come together as a community? It's a big community, almost 90,000 people, and uh, revitalize our shared vision of UBC. There is a strategic plan. Uh, it was uh, put together in 2018. 2024 and 2018 are two very different worlds. Uh, we need to think, is it still relevant, accurate? Does it need to be updated? What are the missing pieces? And we will need to come together and decide what do we want to be as a university? How can we be the best UBC that we can be? And uh, probably uh, as early as next year, I hope to engage the community in some, some sort of process uh, to be determined uh, towards uh, seeing, well, what, what, what do we want to look like 5, 10, uh, 20 years from now? And I'll be looking forward to your advice. And I think I'm, uh, I'm at time. Thank you very much for your attention, everybody. And I'm happy to take any questions. <laughs> Thank you, Benoit. Ah, thank you. We do have time for questions, and we have microphones that will be circulating around. Uh, so we'll let you have one question each. <laughs> so how do you think that the limitation of foreign visa yeah. students mm -hmm. will affect UBC, since so much of UBC's budget is related to student foreign student fees. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for that. Uh, uh, just to make sure that everybody knows, uh, about two days ago, uh, Mark Miller, the the Minister of uh, of Immigration, announced uh, that they would put on a, a two year temporary cap on uh, international student visas uh, for reasons that are that are unclear. That the federal government ties it to the housing crisis in a way that I think is not uh, completely factual. Uh, their original plan was to have a trusted institution framework. Uh, they can't sort it out. So now they're putting a, a two-year temporary cap, uh, which, which he, he formally said he wouldn't do. He, he, said, he said a number of months ago that would be like doing surgery with a hammer. And now there he is, you know. Uh, the, the cap, uh, the way that is designed uh, is that I believe 360,000, uh, uh, and, and which is a reduction uh, of about 35% uh, overall. Here's the thing. Here's, here's the very important thing. We think of higher education as these kinds of places, public institutions, McGill, the U of T, Waterloo, UBC. But there's been over the past 10 years, a proliferation of private, private colleges that mostly uh, bring in international students. I don't, I don't know if everybody is aware of this. My understanding is that there's currently in BC 300 private colleges. Th isn't that crazy? Uh, I, 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 have, I, I, have, uh, I have this number from uh, the ministry uh, themselves. 300 private colleges filled with uh, international students I can't speak to the quality of each of them. Maybe some of them are very good, but some of them are terrible. Uh, they're, 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 they're usually uh, offering very quick uh, business degrees, uh, B BBAs. There you go, there you go. Um, my understanding is that 60% of international students in BC go to these private colleges. Doesn't that surprise you? 60%. So, we, we think we welcome a lot of international students, and we do. It's about 25% of UBC, right? Uh, but the real bulk is in these private colleges, and that's the real problem, and both the federal government and the provincial government know it. So what they're trying to do, they're going about it a strange way, but what they're trying to do is constrain, restrain, limit uh, this, this business model uh, that... 
I don't think serve the students particularly well and put a lot of pressure uh, in the communities that they're in. Uh, in, in Brampton in Ontario, which is a, a, a town near Toronto, which is not that big, there's 70 of them, right? Think about that. Like there's 70 private college in this relatively little town. And, and then by definition, the town is overrun. Nobody can find housing and so on and so forth. And here in the lower mainland, there's a, there's a lot too. So, so it's a bit of a long way to answer your question, but that's important context. We're lobbying very hard federally, provincially to make sure that when the, the, the federal government allocates the caps to the province and when the province distributes the caps to us, that is UBC, you can take in X number, SFU, you can take in X number, Victoria, you can take in X number, uh, public universities that are reputable, that have a long history of welcoming uh, great international students uh, to bring them to success, uh, to house them well, to treat them well, are prioritized in the, uh, the allocations of the caps. And if, if BC takes the approach that public universities uh, uh, take priority, the caps won't impact us at all. It will all go to the uh, public, but I can't guarantee that today. So we're, be we're being cautious, but there's reasons to be optimistic that we're not the target of the legislation for the question. Paul, you're in charge. Yes. Thank you very much for, <clears throat> for your presentation. Um, in, in these days, we're, we're experiencing lots of polarization, political yes. polarization, yes. And, and in some cases, uh, un unacceptable conduct that yes. emerges from that. I'm just curious to know what you and your team are doing towards um, hopefully achieving institutional neutrality, for example, considering the Calvin principles and, and I'm just wondering how that's going. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you for that. And thank you for evoking the Calvin principle uh, for, for uh, people who might not know uh, that the Calvin Commission at the University of Chicago in 1967, uh, which is kind of the foundational document that states in, in a nutshell, and I summarize, if you believe in academic freedom and in reasoned debate uh, and in having all views bring, brought together so that the truth can emerge, then the university can't take side. That's, uh, that's the principle of university neutrality. And I believe in that uh, very, very strongly. The, 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 the unit of freedom of speech of, on the university is the individual student the, in the individual faculty member, not the university. So we're, we're trying our very best uh, to walk the line of university neutrality, which is not easy because anything you say, People say, well, that's not neutral. I say, well, it's, neut it's neutral according to most people. It might not be neutral for you, but we're trying to walk that principle of, uh, of university uh, neutrality to encourage respect and reason debate and compassion uh, on, on campus. Uh, it's difficult. Uh, it's difficult and there's been regrettable incidents. Uh, we try to do two things at once. Uh, on the one hand, we say, Hate and racism and discrimination have no place on this campus and any incident reported will be investigated, but we're not in a police state. What you really want is to encourage your community to engage respectfully and carefully with one another and remember that we're all, uh, we're all suffering, uh, but it's difficult it's putting tensions on universities across the country. Thank you for the question. Thank you. Can you hear me? Over here. Wait, 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 oh, here, we, here we go, apologies. Is it on? Um, thank you for visiting us today. My and pleasure. I actually met you at uh, the November 11th events where you spoke with reference to the veterans. You were invited. You were invited. To I speak. remember that. Yeah, I remember yeah, that. And you were there with the premier and so on. And you were there with our veterans. And they were impressed. Uh, when I say our veterans, UBC has 479 veteran students in the program that we've universities yeah. admitted. Got to be right up to my mouth. Okay, maybe that's better. So there's a group of us in the college, the Emeritus College, that are very committed and work towards bringing into UBC a sector of Canada that hasn't had a chance to move into post-secondary education. Yep. That's many people who've served, the men and women who've served in our country and internationally, and more recently now in fire control and so on. And many of them, when they finish that career, say to us, you know, I'd like to go and do a degree. And UBC has created a veteran-friendly initiative under the former president that was here. And it's recognized in Ottawa and so on. And what we'd like to do is just invite you at another time, not today, 
but I could see where UBC could become a leader in Canada as a post-secondary institution, making available a pathway for more veteran students to be represented mm. in post-secondary education. Last thing, in uh, 2025, the Invictus Games are coming here. And the veterans on our campus uh, would like to host an evening with Prince Harry. And they, I was with them in the UK when those games were on. And he likes to meet with veterans. So we're thinking, wouldn't it be great as part of the Invictus Games, which UBC has agreed to offer the Aquatic Center for some of the competition, if we had an event that internationally and nationally, people could see UBC bringing forward their students to host the, the head of the Invictus Games, which is him. And we, we have a lot of people in this college that have family that were in the military mm. and were very eager to proceed. And so it's more of a pitch to what you put up there, like underrepresented populations in Canada. I believe that's one of them. And so thank you. And if you're, uh, if we can follow up with you, we'd like to meet and, and uh, be more detailed. Great. But they are neglected in Canada and I'd like to see UBC take the lead. Thank you so Thank much you. Uh, for that. I, I remember the event well. It was for Remembrance Day. Uh, yes. we, we were uh, we were with the premier uh, at uh, at Memorial Gym. Uh, it was it was very it was very well done. It was one of my first public events at UBC, and uh, I was very pleased uh, to learn that the long association uh, of UBC with uh, with the armed forces and with the supporting veterans uh, through the world wars and. Uh, uh, and uh, and beyond and uh, and and we did meet uh, some of the uh, members of the organizations very special uh, and uh, I, I look forward to a further meeting uh, to discuss what more we can do to support the education of veterans that's that's great uh, I can't say I'm up to speed with the Invictus uh, games but I'd, I'd, I'd love to uh, to learn more thank you for that it's lovely lovely to meet you nice to meet you as well yes um, as you probably know uh, Emeritus College is a pioneering effort in Canada. Uh, what's your vision for, for not just this gathering here, but the entire concept of Emeritus College at UBC? My vision? <laughs> what's your vision? Oh, do you have two hours? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I, I got to say I was visited by, uh, by the leadership uh, about, uh, about, about a month ago. This is when uh, an, an invitation was extended to me to visit, which uh, I was eager to, uh, uh, to accept. Uh, and uh, the, uh, the documentation revealed a, a great number of members lots of research productivity, lots of service on this campus. It was very impressive all in all. Uh, I, I'll get it wrong, Paul, but uh, it, it, the number that stuck in my mind at the time, uh, but before uh, my, my ailing brain uh, let it wash away, was that something like 20% of, uh, of uh, UBC faculty members are member of this college. Does that sound about right? That sounds about, that sounds about right, Sarah? So, so that's, that's a significant uh, number and that's a tremendous force. So that's the question. Uh, what, what are you interested in and what, uh, what can we do together in addition to the things that you already do uh, te teaching? I'm sure some people uh, teach uh, research, certainly scholarship, uh, service to the community. Uh, we're open to suggestions. Fantastic, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Roger Boucher from Educational Studies. I've been here 40 years and I've been to quite a few of these first meeting with the new president. I'm deeply disappointed by your speech today because you didn't mention something that uh, several respected former yes. presidents put right in the front at the top of their slide, not that they had PowerPoint in those days. I'm thinking of David Strangway and particularly Martha Piper, particularly Dr. Piper, they all said, I've been told that UBC has an edifice complex, uh, what? but under my edifice, comp, putting up bloody buildings on every bit of garden and lawn that you can find, chop down the trees and put up a building. Uh, under my regime, that's going to stop, said Martha Piper. Uh, instead, we're going to concentrate on improving the learning climate for all the students on this campus. Now, sit in your chairs and calm down and take a big breath because we're all going to, also going to improve the learning climate for the faculty. 
But then, of course, you come into your office on Monday morning, and what's that uh, trundling down the road? Concrete truck, truck full of rebar and bulldozers and diggers. So I'm a bit disappointed to see those four slides up there as if that's kind of taken for granted and it's all going to happen. About the health gateway, we already have on this campus places like the family practice unit that probably people of our age have been going to since the 1970s, like me. And there's this crisis in this country about a shortage of family doctors, but the UBC model that's built around that family practice unit is brilliant. I think it's brilliant. And every time I hear people whining about waiting lists and the crisis in the Canadian healthcare, I sort of refer them to that. However, very quickly, I don't really have a question, but I just want to make a couple of responses. Down the road here, the Kerner Library is without doubt one of the most beautiful it university is, buildings beautiful. in this country. I think I even made a donation to that place and also to the swimming pool over there. There was a president, and I don't even know which one it was, who somehow decided that the books didn't need to be stored there anymore, but it would be taken over by the senior administrators of this university. Actually, I was up, at there, I was up there yesterday getting a, a book on interlibrary loan, and I must say that the, the treatment that's been meted out to the library on this campus is shocking. When I came here in the 1970s, and we just had the one library over there, the librarians were extremely professional and helpful, yeah. and they were nice people. This library was almost as good as the one at Victoria University of Wellington, where I was brought up. And so there's this, there's this techno-zealotry in this university where people think that, oh, everything's now online, that di mm. digitization has become a verb. Yeah, okay, sum up. <laughs> um, <laughs> About the film companies, that's been going on since the 1970s. In the old days, they used to be able to film here for free. Charge them. Give the Canadian filmmakers a good price. We should be encouraging the arts in this country. But if they're from the neighbours to the south, money. Make them pay in cash. Uh, Roger. Anyway. Roger, but, but that was a great intervention. That was last a great point, intervention. I'm sit down. This organisation is extraordinary. And we owe Santa Ono a big vote of thanks. I think we've already given him that. But if you happen to run into him at a president's meeting, you say, thank you for doing that. But for you, this room is full of some extremely talented and knowledgeable people. So actually, you've got to find a, you talk about pathways forward. One of them leads right into here. You need to benefit from the thousands of years of experience mm. that are sitting in this room. But welcome to Welcome to Vancouver. Thanks, Roger. Good that, place to live. That, that's one of the best interventions I've ever seen, uh, Roger. There's too much in there for me to comment on every point, but let, let's see what I can remember. Uh, edifice complex that marks you as a psychologist, yeah. right? There you go. There you go. So we're, fe we're fellow psychologists. Very clever. I'm going to use this uh, just to reassure you, just to reassure you and to make sure that your disappointment in me is mild. Uh, the, the, the four buildings that I, that I showed and presented as if they were a done, dean, a done deal, that's because they are. They're, they're, they're almost done, essentially. And, and, le and let me reassure you uh, that every building that will, be, that will be built while I'm in this position will, by definition, enhance uh, the academic uh, and research mission of faculty and students. The, the two go together, and the mission leads, the building follows. Let me reassure you. Uh, on uh, on that point, uh, you, you you also made a good point about uh, about libraries uh, transforming themselves, and and I'm not a librarian, but I've overseen four universities uh, library, and uh, there, there's always a, there's always a challenge as the use of paper books uh, decreases amongst the student population, and uh, there's an increased demand for electronic uh, resources. So how do we balance? Uh, the two, how do we accommodate more and more students into the buildings? And libra librarians have to make extremely uh, strategic, challenging, difficult decisions uh, as to how to accommodate uh, uh, the two worlds. And I'm, I'm very proud of the uh, Network Library here, and, uh, and thank you for highlighting their kindness and professionalism. I, I do see them every day because I, I am located in, in, in Kerner, and, uh, and, uh, and, and it is a real, uh, a real asset. Uh, and, and finally, you, you ended, I thought, very appropriately uh, on the, I think you said the thousands of years of experience. It'd be, it'd be, inter it'd be interesting to calculate how many years of experience exactly uh, there is uh, in, the, in this association, the Emeritus College. 
Uh, but uh, as, I was, uh, as I was saying, uh, I'm, I'm grateful uh, for this group's involvement in teaching and research and service and uh, whichever initiative uh, the group would want to, uh, to uh, spearhead uh, at uh, the university. And, uh, and thank you very much for that. Great to meet you, Roger. And you showed me your book before, uh, but I wasn't sure if you were offering me a copy or not, because you showed it to me, then you took it back. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so I just have a quick question. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, my name is uh, Rabab Ward from Engineering. Um, I, I noticed that we are now over 70,000, 70, 70.7. Yes. And a few years ago, every time I look at these numbers, they increase and increase. But I, I haven't looked at the statistics of the faculty. The faculty should, is it really increasing in that, uh, yeah. in, in that ratio? Because a few years ago, it wasn't. And I remember that, not in engineering, but across UBC. This is very important. Yeah, well, it, it's, that's, a, a university is students and faculty. Uh, that's what a university is. And, and when the student numbers grow, the faculty numbers need. Uh, yeah, well, my, well, my, my understanding is, is there's been a, uh, a very highly uh, publicized faculty hiring uh, initiative. The, the name will escape me. I, th I think it's the President's Excellence Fund. Is that, is that correct? Cons the President's Excellence Fund, uh, that's really allowed to catch up uh, to the growth of students and the initiative is ongoing uh, and that continues to allow us to hire uh, some of the best, uh, best faculties from around the, co the country and around the world. But your point is well taken. Uh, that ratio needs to, to, to remain right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Benoit. Thank you, everybody. We only have a few minutes left before the president has to leave. Uh, but I do, on behalf of the college, want to welcome, <laughs> welcome him to the Vancouver weather. Uh, Be protected. That would be very helpful today. Very helpful today. Thank you so much. Thank you. And, <laughs> next time he comes to visit. All right. Uh, I will... Uh, just draw your attention to this last slide. There are a number of, of uh, activities coming up this week and our next uh, general meeting topic is there, uh, which will, I think, uh, illustrate one of uh, the points that Benoit made about the kinds of research that UBC is involved in there, uh, and the uh, uh, transformation or the transfer of information to uh, making jobs and, and research out there for our next uh, a meeting. But thank you, Benoit. And if there is time, if you would like still to... I'd love to have meet, a chance to say people, hi. Yes. Keep, keep an eye on your watch. We won't let you stay too long. But uh, thank you very much. My pleasure. People, I'm sure thank you, everybody. Like